I think it's a good one. Um, but my name is Brock Zevian, um, real estate coach, life coach, business coach, and dad. Just very excited to uh, be here this morning. Uh, hope you had a great start to your week. Uh, yesterday, we talked about opportunities and attitude. Hope you had a great attitude yesterday. Opportunities presented itself to you and you took advantage of it. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about what you repeat you reinforce. And when, when I talk about repeat and reinforcement, I also think about the line that says, um, <clears throat> uh, Einstein said it, what you, why can't I think about it? The line I had, um, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results is called insanity. And how is it? That when I say this to you, that you're going to be like, oh, that makes perfect sense. And we we do it in this element, meaning, okay, if I told you that every single day, I would like you to repeat the habit of doing 10 push-ups a day, and I want you to do it for 30 days, as well if I told you that I'd like you to eat healthy and remove some of the carbs from your diet. And I like you to do that for 30 days in a row. Okay. Now, D, if we did this and I said in 30 days, I'd like you to give me results by giving me a thumbs up, how many would you agree that you probably would be a little bit stronger and that your healthy diet would be a little bit better. How many of you would agree to that, that that would take shape, that that would happen, right? Okay. Now, Braden, we understand that physically what it would do. What I don't understand and why this is such a challenge is when we go to the mental aspect of it, though, When I say, I like you to read 10 pages a day, I like to say, how come we don't do a write our affirmations down every single day? How come we don't do our gratitude every single day? How come we don't pray or meditation or whatever it might be for you? How come we understand that if I did 10 push-ups and eat healthy 30 days from now, I'll be better? But on the mental capacity, we don't really do as much. We don't write it down. We don't put it in a journal. Because what we repeat, we reinforce. We just proved it by what I just said to you about 10 push-ups and doing eating correctly or eating healthy for 30 days. We repeat that behavior. It reinforces what our vision is and what we want to go to and grow to. But for whatever reason, when we go to the mindset and positive mode, we kind of turn it down and we shut it off for whatever rhyme or reason. We slow it down a little bit. Because if I went and asked for everybody on Facebook and I asked for everybody on Zoom and I said to you, how many of you, good morning, Josie, how many of you actually have a journal written out? How many of you have like scrap pieces of paper of chicken scratch written down of things of affirmations or good things that you say in positive energy and you write it down. We don't have time. Brock, you don't understand. My morning is extremely busy. I have several kids. I'm trying to get them off to school. I'm trying to get to work. You don't get it. Okay. I don't agree. What you do is is you value sleep, that repeated behavior, and you reinforce it by sleeping in and hitting the snooze button. Because if you got up 10 minutes earlier, you would be able to have time for some of that positive mindset. And I'm not here to scold people and be like, oh, gosh, I can't believe you're not doing this. I'm just trying to reinforce what you repeat becomes part of your pattern. And for those, this is my biggest pet peeve. Biggest pet peeve. I've been in many organizations throughout my time period. And for those that I've, I can't say all the organizations, but I've been in organizations and I don't go to certain organizations anymore. 
Because when I'm in these meetings and when I'm in conversations, I hear the same thing over and over and over and over again, and they just stay in this little cocoon and they don't change their behaviors. They don't change their habit. They keep repeating it day in and day out, and they're expecting something different to take place, and it doesn't happen. And they're like, you don't understand, Brock. My life is terrible. I'm doing this, and I don't like my relationship, and and my money situation is different tight and and I'm poor and I'm in debt and my credit cards and my wife and I and my husband and I and my kids and I'm like ah drive me crazy what are you doing different you keep repeating the same behavior which reinforces why you're in your position so I struggle with that because when I'm in that environment there's only so much I can take Just like we talked about environment last week, your environment is conducive to what you're trying to get to. So when my vision and where I'm trying to grow, I need to be around those type of people. See, I say it all the time that if you lived with me, the chances are that you probably would wake up close to the same time period I would do. And you might be like, oh, no, I wouldn't, Brock. Well, if you have the same vision of what you're trying to do, then you would. Because when I'm in an environment and I see Greg making phone calls and I see Christian making phone calls. And when I was with Keller Williams and we started a prospecting room and people are like, I'm going down the prospecting room, bro, to go make my phone calls. I'm like, what am I doing? I need to go down there too. I need to make my phone calls. Right? Because what I was repeating was just doing my emails. Let me do my emails. Let me put out this fire. And then I'll go down. No. I repeated that, which created my reinforcement of why I needed to do it. And the next thing I know, I didn't have any listings. I didn't have any buyers. And the people in the prospecting room were getting them. Because that environment was conducive to generating leads. So I want you to reflect today. Okay, I want you to think about what your morning routine looks like. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole day because that's going to be too overwhelming. Take the first three hours of your day. What are you doing the first three hours of your day? What repeated behaviors are you doing that reinforces what you got going on? And then if you want to get a little crazy and you want to start thinking a little bit more when you get past that 9 to 12, I want you to think about what activities you are repeating daily that reinforces why you either have business or don't have business. Okay? Because what you do during that time period dictates probably what your wallet's going to look like in 60 days, 30 days from now. I always can tell what people activities are doing between 9 and 12 when I coach and I, and I have conversations. I say, what are you doing between 9 and 12? Well, Brock, this is what I got going on. Okay, well, you're going to be broke in about three to six months. What? Well, yeah, because your repeated behaviors are not reinforcing for you to make any money. Okay? I told you the other day that I haven't had any listing appointments in 10 days. Thank goodness. I got buyers going on because the buyer market has shifted. And so I have several buyers that I'm working with. Okay. I talked to you yesterday about Thomas Jefferson's quote on how Greg went to an open house. He's been grinding. His hard work did not lead him to luck. Right. His hard work got him an opportunity. Yesterday, I had an opportunity. I had a from a past client that I met literally two years ago that he's been getting, they've been getting the MLS matrix search. He called me out of the blue yesterday and said, I found some land I want to go buy, $600,000. We're ready. Okay. That's not luck. That's something I worked on for two years that's finally cultivating. Okay. You don't get to do that or have opportunities if we're busy just talking and looking at and not doing any income producing activities. And I say this nicely. I'm just, y- your, your habits and what you repeat reinforce your opportunities later down the road, guys. Okay. So I need you to understand, look at what you got going on. Look at what you're repeating so it can reinforce it. The simplest thing. I do 10 push-ups every day. Okay. 
What is it that you do every day and do it for 30 days? All right. Now, Christian said something. Let me see what he said in this chat. The chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. Samuel Johnson. I love it. There's actually a, um, a coaching moment I did when I coached baseball about chain links. And I'll save that for another time. That's a really good one now that I remember talking about it. But yeah, the chain li- chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. Okay. Habits, routine, reinforcement. All right, guys, it is 827. Let's dive into who has something they would like to share. Tuesdays are usually um, something with the experienced agents, something that uh, maybe a challenge, um, a role play. Maybe it's a business conversation. I got a really, um, during our prayer call this morning, I have a client or an agent down in Florida who's dealing with open door. Um, they marked the disclosures wrong really badly, meaning they went from a, they, they said that it was a sewer line, city sewer, but it actually is a septic system. So she's got some challenges that I got to work with on that. But I'm going to open up the lines. Um, Facebook world, you have to do it in comments. So please make a comment or a question that you have that you'd like me to answer. Maybe something on what I said this morning on repeats, uh, what you read repeat, you reinforce. Um, Zoom world, you have the opportunity to speak. You get to remove your microphone. So who has something they would like to share with me or bring up or ask me a question about anything or role play? Sipping on my coffee. That usually means somebody's thinking about something. It's just a matter of time. Somebody wants to bring something up. Don't make me have to role play by myself. Do I meditate? Yes, I do meditate. Question was in the Facebook world. Um, I do meditate. I have a very strict schedule in the morning. It's my routine at 435. My alarm goes off. And so um, I start off each morning with prayer. That's exactly how my first 10 minutes are. It's broken down. It's just how I do my routine. When I was sick last week, it was a little chaotic because I was, as I told you, I took Benadryl and I had a panic attack on that Friday when I got up at 745. I'm very, very routine oriented. If anybody would like to know my exact routine, feel free to email me or put me in a direct message here and I will send it to you. It's broken down all the way to pretty much 915 each morning. So from 435 to 915, my day is pretty much routine. Any apps I use for meditation? I don't really use any apps specifically. Um, I use a motivation mindset. A lot of my stuff is reading books. I enjoy reading books. You can see behind me over here, all my books that I read. I do enjoy reading in audio. um, And I listen to a lot of YouTube videos, a lot. It's my YouTube university. Uh, My YouTube is full of videos. Good questions, D. Anybody else have any questions about anything? Comments? Um, Hey, Brock, it's Greg. Good morning to you, brother. What's up, Greg? What do you got for us, man? Well, I'm having my I'm having my health drink here this morning. Oh, there it is. The St. Patrick's Man. Day drink. <laughs> Not the one we used to drink, that's for sure. Yes. So I wanted to comment about communicating with um and I and I know this is probably just like, you know, everyone probably agree, but I I there is um I'm working with someone right now um that is probably gonna get a listing and I'm looking at the neighborhood for some comps. And so there's a property that's on the market that is probably to me spot on, but it's it's under contract and it's going to close soon. So I reached out to that agent to find out when they're going to close on that property because it's probably going to be important um, for us for a number. Those in the real estate world, I want you to make note, that's how you find out more information is you call that other agent. So very good. So the issue is, is that I have not had a return call from that agent. Mm. So, and it's, and they're a pretty big firm. Um, So I just wanted to, you know, to me, it's, I get frustrated uh, with dealing with that because it's just, it's really, to me, it's what's, it's part of who we are in our job. 
communicating with brokers, one another, sharing information. And so maybe if you just, you know, want to touch upon to those that are on here, even those that are, you know, relatively new, why is it important to communicate with agents just to talk to them about a property? So, yes, two parts. One, communication obviously is very, very important in anything you do, like literally relationships, like your kids, like anything that you do, communication is very important. Unfortunately, in any type of industry, what you do when I was a school teacher in the administration world, real estate, like not everybody has a high level of communication. I can only encourage people to communicate, but here's the biggest thing that I, that I would, you know, not I, I tell you, but really, cause you asked the question, but in general, what I've learned is that I focus on, I use the serenity prayer. I only focus on what I can control. I can't control this other agent and I can get myself all fired up and frustrated and fatigued because this lady didn't do it. So I practice the three by three rule when it comes time for people who don't respond to me. I practiced that I made the phone call. A couple hours later, I will send you a text message. And a couple hours later, I will send you an email. Okay. I will do that for three straight days in a row. Okay. That's my rule, my three by three, when you don't respond to me. Typically, typically, I will get a response in some capacity by the third day. And it's usually, I, I do it by guilt. Like, oh my gosh, Brock, you don't understand how busy I am. I'm sure you're completely busy. And, but that's the only thing I could suggest to you is a three by three. Um, unfortunately, there are people in our world that just in our industry that don't respond at all. And you can only do your due diligence to be able to help them as much as you possibly can. Um, and it's just, it's, it's tough. Cause you're like, I'm, I'm trying to get this, but you know, but that's, that's what I could say in reference to what I do, the three by three plan um, to try to get, to, to try to hopefully have them talk to you. So hopefully that helps you out in some capacity. Maybe they'll call you today. Or another thing you do is have another person in your office call. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll answer that phone. I don't know. Um, so good stuff. Um, couple people, Christy, I will get to you. Definitely for sure. I will send you an email um, and send you over my uh, schedule, my routine in the morning. Yeah. Routine mornings are very, very challenging, um, but I think it starts off your day in a very, very strong note. Uh, military does it. And that's why they are what they are is they, they see success in that. Um, I had a post that in workplace communication is horrible in this industry. People don't answer their calls on their own listing. Yes. I Here's my rule of thumb on the phone. Okay. I know that there's spam out there. There's people that don't want to answer the phone. I try to do, a, I, was, I was not very good at this. My rule is between nine o'clock and six o'clock, I will answer my phone any opportunity I can. Now you might be like, Brock, I've tried to call you and you haven't called me. Yes. There's also means I'm also on the other line. So, but if I have an opportunity that if I can get to the phone, I will answer it. And if it's spam or Zillow or somebody trying to sell me something, I try to be applied as respectful as I can. And if they're persistent, which I give them credit for, but I also just hang up on them. I don't have time, but I mean, but I will do, it's, it's a habit that I reinforce that I said to myself three months ago that I will do a better job of answering my phone. I don't care what's going on. I will do it. The only time I don't is if I, if I don't, if I'm on the other line. Um, but I, I try to do a very good job of answering my phone. Um, manual recommending insight timer for meditation. Very good for tracking routine and it's free. Um, so that was in the, I will post it here, D on, I will, thank you, Manuel. I will grab it from zoom and I will put it into the Facebook, um, chat as well here. So that way you have it. So, um, anybody else got anything? All right, guys. Um, where, why can't I do my chat all of a sudden? My Facebook, let me tell you, it's been very unique the last couple of days. Um, great stuff, guys. I appreciate everybody being on here. Facebook world, thank you so much. Remember, if you want to be on Zoom, you certainly can. Zoom gives you a little bit more insight on behind the scenes on our, our team meeting. 
talks about my schedule, talks about the other team's schedule and what they got going on, as well as gives you the audio aspect so you can speak and talk to us. So thank you, um, Facebook world. Uh, remember, Zoom world, check out our Facebook page, Brock Zegan's Mindset Motivation Calls dot com. It is on the Facebook world. And I uh, appreciate you all being on here, Facebook. And we will talk to you tomorrow morning at uh, 815. Zoom world.